Hey YouTube, Joseph Vollmer here. This morning, while we were running around getting gas and everything else, I stopped at Lowe's and bought a new weed eater because the old steel FS85 Pro Series that I've had since 99, the summer of 99 or 2000, is getting pretty rough. It still runs, but it's a, it's got the it has the bicycle style handlebars on it because it's more of a brush cutter than a weed eater. So you have a throttle over here and you have your other hand grip here and a shoulder strap. The only problem is to try and weed eat with it, you have to turn sideways like this to be able to walk and weed eat at the same time or you have to walk sideways, which is not the easiest thing to do. But I've been debating on buying a new weed eater for a while. The last time I used that one, the primer bolt cracked again, so I'm going to have to replace that. Um, and I'm, it, it leaks gas. I mean, this thing is 18 years old. I have, needless to say, it has been abused. I have cut trees with it. I mean, I have literally used it most of its life as a brush cutter, not a weed eater. So, anyway, the steel's a good brand, but I decided this time I've had a lot of good luck with my Husqvarna chainsaw, and I thought I'd go to Husqvarna, and Lowe's does carry Husqvarna. So we went up to Lowe's and I was looking at them and I bought the Husqvarna 324L. Now this is a four cycle, um, it's not a two stroke, this is a four stroke so you don't have to mix the gas and oil. It's got its own oil in the crankcase, you use regular lawnmower gas just like you would. And this one, the there was a 324L and then there was a, I believe it was a 322 was the next size down was a two stroke it this is a 25 cc that was a 22 and a half cc horsepower wise this one puts out 0 0.07 more horsepower they're roughly the same horsepower the 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 322 is a one horsepower this is 1.07 horsepower so they use i think the same cutting head but this one's a four stroke um, so, I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, anyway, what you're going to see now is I'm going to go ahead and get it unboxed. We're going to see what it takes to get it put together, get some gas in it. Uh, oh, and by the way, this one being a four-stroke, it does use, it actually uses a Honda engine. The other one, I don't remember the brand of the engine now, but it's not something I've heard of. And I don't believe it was a Husqvarna engine. It says it's a, it says it was an X Torque, but the manufacturer of the engine I don't recognize. So knowing that this is a four-stroke Honda engine, I know how reliable and durable the engines are. So hopefully this thing, hopefully I'll get another 20 plus years of service out of this weed eater. So we'll go ahead and if he can follow me with the camera, we're gonna lay her down on the ground here, get it opened up. And unfortunately, the box was in better shape. Let me scoot back. I'm trying to get my hands in here, boy. The box was in better shape, but I had it in the back of my truck, which I had my truck parked in the barn when it started raining. And in the time it took us to get from the barn down here, the outside of this box just got absolutely drenched. So, okay, I'm assuming that's the power head. Nope, that is the bottom end. All right, looks like we got a little bag with, let me open this up. We've got our Grinch, if you want to call that, and basically our multi-tool, a spark plug wrench on one side, uh, an Allen key on the bottom, so I'm assuming this must use Allens for the guard, and another size, basically socket on the other side. Um, got a little bottle of 10W40 Husqvarna four-stroke oil. We have another small wrench here, 10 millimeter. Almost looks like a spoon on the opposite end. Another small Allen wrench. 
and is that marked for size? Five millimeter Allen wrench. Our guard with the line cutter. The instruction manual, our operator's manual with all the warranty information. And a metal rod. Now I'm going to assume the metal rod is probably for uh, locking the head so that you can take the head on and off. For the moment I'm going to stick this stuff back in the bag so I can set it off to the side. We'll get the rest of the machine out and find out what we need to do next. Now, there is the cutting head. Looks like it comes pre-strung with the Husqvarna line. And, yep, that's the rest. That is everything else that's in the box. And this is the rest of the machine here. This is the power head. So, let's lift that straight out. Now, right here on this side is your oil fill. And it even comes with, it even has a little dipstick in there. It doesn't look like it's factory filled with anything. There's oil on the dipstick, but I don't see anything in the crankcase. Which I didn't think it would be shipped with oil. So, and I will double check. I'm assuming the bottle, I'm assuming the bottle that they sent us, we're going to add the full amount. But I will double check the operator's manual. Um... There's a tag on the starter that says fill oil before start. So you have to keep in mind, since this is a four stroke, you do need to check the oil every time you use it, just like you would your lawnmower. Um, it is not, you know, it, it's not a two stroke, so the gas and the oil aren't mixed. Now, let's see, okay, this is the emissions tag. Um, yeah. So it's guaranteed to be emissions compliant for 300 hours. So, before I put the oil in, I'm going to turn it this way. We're going to get our guard. We're going to get our guard put on. Um, let's see. And to do that, hey, Mr. Camera Boy. Hmm. He's back there texting. To do that, okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to slide. Actually, I think I'm going to have to take. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Hence the Allen wrench. There's a Allen here on the side. Nope, not that one. We're going to take our multi-tool. Our multi-tool. We're going to take this bolt out. And that will allow that bracket to come loose. And they're nice enough, they actually put a rubber or like a vinyl o-ring on the back of these bolts so that you can turn them, you can shake them, they're not going to fall out of the bracket as long as the o-ring's there. Now, we're going to put that underneath the shaft. We're going to slide that through. Now i got to get a little vinyl o-ring now, it's kind of a pain. All right. All right. And same deal here. There we go. Now get that one started, and then this is our 10 millimeter back here that holds the guard on. Oop. 
I'm going to try and get it started by hand first. There we go. And then we can use the handy little wrench they gave us to tighten that up. Tight. Now I gotta tighten up the Allen screw that holds the bracket on for the guard. That keeps it in the proper position. Okay, I don't want to strip it out. Now just to check. Nope. Okay, that's got a Allen key here. And that's good and tight. Now, oh, that's my fuel filter that's vibrating around. Now, real quick before I put the oil in, I'm going to balance it up here on this box. And I'm going to double check the owner's manual to make sure I add that whole bottle of oil. And, okay, so the only thing. The only thing that I have found for the oil, it does not give a capacity for checking the oil. It says, where did it go? Oh, oil level. This machine must be switched off and placed on a flat surface. When you check the oil level, unscrew the oil cap, clean the dipstick, and insert the cap again without screwing it down. So you do not check. This one, you don't check with it screwed down. Some engines you do, some you don't. Um, when the oil level is low, top up using engine oil to the edge of the refill hole. Use only recommended engine oil. So, I'm going to fill it based on that strategy. We're going to place it on a level surface. So this floor is about as level as you're going to get. We're going to take our dipstick out. Set it down here on the, on the bag, it's still clean. You can zoom in here if you want. I'm going to take the cap off. Try and get this foil off of here. And when you do this, you got to be real careful. You don't want the foil, you don't want chunks of the foil ending up in the engine, because that would be bad. So, and this is just. 1040, it's a Husqvarna 1040 engine oil, and they do say you don't have to use Husqvarna oil, but it is recommended. And then I'm going to try and gently pour this in slowly. Until I see it come up to the edge of the fill hole. A little bit extra in there, I think. Let me wipe that off. Dip that in without screwing it down. Pull it out, and we are right about the top of the cross hatch marks on the dipstick. So I think it is safe to say that that is full. Okay, so we've got that full of oil. I got a little bit left, so I'm going to, once I run it for a minute or two, I'm going to come back and double check it. Now, I normally wouldn't recommend doing this in the garage for the simple fact that it, I just don't like having gas in the garage in the event that it spills, but considering the fact that it's pouring down rain outside, or it was, We're going to fill her 
up in here. That for the sake of the video. So get the little bit of water that's on here off. Now this is this is fresh gas. We just got it. I always buy all my gas from the same gas station for the most part, 99% of the time. And I just filled this up when we were on our way back from town earlier. So and this is regular gas. This is not mixed. Now I would I would worry about using a some you know an uh, ethanol an additive that helps to take the ethanol out of the gas but considering the fact that I do I will do enough weed eating that this gas will won't stay in this weed eater long enough to worry about it going bad I'm not terribly concerned all right now that's screwed down and we're gonna go ahead and try and start it now there's a primer bulb if he can, if he can zoom in for me let me turn the weed eater real quick there's a primer bulb right down here on the bottom of the carburetor and I don't know how well it's going to show up and you almost it's kind of hard to get to but if you watch it you can see it as it starts filling with fuel and it'll purge all the air out of the carburetor the more you pump it, you can see the air coming out. There we go. We're just going to pump it until we get rid of most of the air bubbles. And all the way up is choked. I'm going to put the switch in the on position. This does not have a start position, so. I'm going to try it with no throttle and see if it'll start. Second pull fired right up. Okay. Now, that is one thing that it did say is that this is a very quiet weed eater. And I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm talking a little louder than I was before, but at an idle, it is actually extremely quiet. I don't, this isn't bothering my hearing, it's my little baby air compressor that's over here behind my motorcycle right now is actually louder running than this engine is. So, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. We're going to, I just want to recheck the oil and make sure it is still right up on the full mark since the engine was dry, it's never had any oil in it before. Um, Wipe the dipstick off. I can see it right at the edge of the fill hole, so. Yep. And we can't, you're not going to get any more in. It is literally right on the edge of the fill hole, so. We're going to put that back in. Tighten that up. I'm going to tie my bag of tools up. So that I can store them somewhere safe and they'll all stay together with the owner's manual. Matter of fact, I'll put them over here. And I'm going to have him stop the video for just a minute. I'm going to go outside, get my hearing protection in because I don't know how loud this thing's going to be. Grab some safety glasses, fire it back up, and I'm going to try and get him to shoot a little bit of video of me using it some just so you can get an idea of how loud it is and how well it works and then later on down the road guys I will give you a more comprehensive review once I've had time uh, a chance to put some hours on it and see how it does see how it works that sort of thing um, and just so you know this is an 18 inch cut it's 25 cc's 18 inch cut and it uses an 095 line. So, um, 
You might be able to go a little bit bigger, but it does say on the box it specs out at an 095 line. Uh, it's a, it, this is the professional grade, the commercial grade model. So generally when I buy uh, outdoor power tools, I try and always buy the commercial grade models. My steel weed eater, that was a commercial grade model. And like I said, I have abused the snot out of that thing. I mean, clearing fence lines and brush and... You know, stuff that, I've, I've cut stuff down with it that you probably wouldn't run over with a tractor and a brush hole. So, it's held up, and I mean, it still works. It's just more, with the way the handle's set up, everything else, it's more useful as a brush cutter than it is an actual weed eater for doing trimming on your lawn. Um, so, hopefully this one will hold up just as well. I've got a Husqvarna chainsaw. That was a professional grade saw, and I have probably cut somewhere in the neighborhood of 110 cords of firewood with that saw by itself. And aside from replacing a primer bulb, doing one tune-up, you know, spark plug, air filter, fuel filter on it, I have not done anything else. I've run through probably five chains. I'm still on the original bar, um, you know, and it still runs great. I don't have any issues with it, so hopefully that one, this one will be as good. Anyway guys, do me a favor, the video of it running is going to come here in just a second. He's going to shoot that for me while I'm out using it, but if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section, rate the video for me. Uh, if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, that's fine, I don't care. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the little notification bell that's somewhere down here, right next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get notifications on all my upcoming videos. And guys, please share these with your friends. Uh, hopefully they're helpful. Hopefully you guys like them. And uh, every time they get shared, it just gives me a chance to get a new subscriber. And hopefully you guys will find some content you like on my channel. So, thanks again guys. Don't forget, get out there and get your hands dirty. You might just have a little fun doing it. All right, guys. So we're outside now. I'm gonna give it a shot. Where you can see, you can hear how it runs, um, or at least hear the the sound difference. Turn that on. Now, as always, guys, you can ask my son who's holding the camera. I preach safety. I got my safety glasses on, and these are uh, actual safety glasses. They're not sunglasses. I do have hearing protection in. <clears throat> it is noticeably quieter, but on the same hand. I still like to be able to hear, so I'm not going to risk it. We're going to fire it back up. I think I can honestly say that's a lot quieter than my steel. Still a little cold yet. So I'm going to have him shut the camera off. I'm going to let it warm up for just a minute. Uh, let the engine come up to temperature to this four cycle engine. And it does use a 1040 oil, which is a little bit heavier oil. That'll give it a chance to warm up and get some oil swirling around inside the engine. It's this new engine. And uh, then we'll come back to the, the video of the work. I'm going to warm up a couple minutes, which is important. Unfortunately, one thing I forgot to mention, this thing does not come with a shoulder strap, but I don't think I'm going to need one at this point. With a brush cutter, you really do because your handles are out in front of you. Um, now this one is about a pound and a half or two pounds heavier than the two-cycle version, but it's actually pretty well balanced. I mean, without a lot of force, I can hold it there. The balance point, I think, is about... Balance points about the front of the handle. Now, the only downside is I don't know how this is going to, how it will do running if I tilt it sideways. I hope that's not going to be an issue because uh, I do like to use the edge. But we'll see. I'm going to try it with it. We'll see how it does.
throttle and it seems to be doing just fine. I generally don't like to run wide open throttle when I'm weeding along concrete or these edging stones because it tends to tear up the line. If I'm just working on regular grass, I'll run it wide open because I can go faster. But it's got plenty of power. It's not bogging it down at all. Like I said before, if you do a favor, please comment, rate, subscribe.